free. So it's an interesting experiment. On the one hand, uh, I'm putting resources back into the open source community, and I feel good about that. If Ubuntu doesn't become sustainable, at least I feel like I've, I've, I've helped accelerate and, and inject money back into a community that really empowered me to, to build thought. Um, but if we can build services around that software that pay the salaries of the people who produce the software, then that will make me feel even better because I can go on to other projects and, and that I know will then continue to grow and continue to thrive. So this falls under your new company, Canonical? Canonical, yeah. It's a little, little in-joke in the geek world. We talk about the, the, the Canonical way of doing something. Uh, when you're programming, for example, when you're writing software, the canonical way of doing something is the, the sort of the correct way of doing things. And so we've, we've tried to find, within the spirit of the open source community, the, the correct way to build a Linux distribution. So where to next? Um, at, in what sense? For open source, um, for me personally, for canonical, for Ubuntu? Excellent. For All of that. Right. <laughs> Starting at the top. <laughs> for, for open source, well, I firmly believe open source is going to win the desktop war. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that in a short period of time, most co corporations, when they deploy a new computer, will put open source on it. Uh, it may not be entirely open source. They may have some proprietary applications, some open source applications. But that uh, movement is already um, starting to gain momentum. On the server side, in the data center, behind the scenes, in the back office, it's, the battle is already over. Um, and so I think it's just a question of time before that happens on the desktop. Uh, and so I really hope that Ubuntu will participate in all of that, that Ubuntu will be one of the, the places that people love to get their software. Um, for me personally, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. It's, uh, it's nice to take on projects which are difficult, which are risky, um, and the Ubuntu Canonical project is, fits right into all of those. It's great to be doing a technology project again because you, know, you can run from your roots, but they... Um, they're, they're firmly attached, and that's, that's just what I love doing. Um, in terms of um, movements in technology in general, um, I think the big thrust over the next five to ten years is going to be collaboration. Um, and it's interesting that open source will be the driver because open source is effectively the product of collaboration in the software development industry. Um, it's the fact that the Internet allows people to share their code and to work in an efficient manner, even when they're on opposite sides of the planet, that has actually allowed open source to happen. You couldn't do open source when they were starting Microsoft because we just didn't have the communications tools. You had to be all in the same building on the same campus. Um, now, it's almost more efficient to be distributed. You get you know, different ways of seeing things. Um, and so what I think we're going to see in software is people trying to take that spirit of collaboration that exists in the software industry now through open source and putting, building those tools into your business applications. For example, I think we'll see, we'll get to the point where you can be editing in your word processor, you can be editing a document and you can say to Jack in London, Jack, you know, hop online and start editing this document with me and as I'm editing up here, you can be editing down here in the same document. Start working on a spreadsheet with different people working at the same time on different aspects of the, the spreadsheet, building effectively a collaborative work. That's how open source is produced, and I think we're going to see those ideas moving into more you know, mainstream areas of software technology. Open source on the desktop, what are the challenges there? It's a very complicated process. If you look at the, the big picture view of how the world will go from being largely Microsoft Windows Office oriented to being largely open source oriented, that's a tremendous transition. Um, with all sorts of stumbling blocks along the way. And we're going to trip on and stub our toes many, many times in getting from here to there. Um, some people will make it immediately. Some people are already there, and others will take a long time to get there. I think it's really a, a, a 5 to 15-year process. In five years' time, I believe, um, when you buy a computer, you'll have a serious choice between open source and, uh, and um, proprietary. And many people will be going the open source way. And in 10 years' time, I, I think it'll pretty much be over. So that's the rough idea of the, the time horizons. Um, the issues that you face if you have an existing infrastructure and you want to start making that transition are um, application compatibility issues. 
Um, and generally what, what we're seeing is that people find ways to make mixed environments work. We're already running mixed environments, but with the Mac and, and Windows and even older environments, DOS and NetWare and so on. So Linux and the open source world are, are just an extension of that. Um, the fact that a lot of open source software runs on Windows is a huge advantage. So for an organization which runs on Windows on the desktop, the first step often is to take their web browsers and make those open source and their mail clients and make those open source. That helps to reduce the virus load effectively, reduce the number of viruses that fly around. Um, the next step is to, to take people who use Office software but who only use functionality that's already available in open source of Office software and switch them to using stuff like OpenOffice, um, which is compatible at a file format level with the Microsoft stuff, but which is open source. And then during that time, it's not just going to be a question of, 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 um, of transitioning to the open source software we have today, but the open source software itself is improving incredibly rapidly. Um, I'm pretty confident that OpenOffice 2, which is due at some stage in the next six months, will, will be yet another very big step forward towards complete compatibility with Microsoft Office. And uh, I think that will be a very big wake-up call. We get to the point um, pretty soon where the cost of switching from um, one version of Microsoft Office to the open source equivalent um, is the same as the cost of going from that version of Microsoft Office and upgrading and retraining everybody to the next version. So in all of this, there, is, there, there are natural opportunities for people to start making the switch. Um, the issues that we're going to find are, you know, how do I get my music device to work with Linux? How do I get my um, um, Bluetooth phone to talk to Linux so that I can synchronize my mail client address book with my phone address book. And the good news there is that because open source is open source, all it takes is one person somewhere in the world to solve that problem, and you have the solution. And that's what my, what my experience has been like. Um, I'll, um, I'll be using open source software, and I'll, I'll have a printer, and the printer doesn't work with the open source software. And six months later, I'll look again, and someone's done the driver, and it's there, and it just works. And so over time, I think this problem solves itself. Once the momentum is there, manufacturers and vendors um, will absolutely want to ship Linux versions of all of their software and all of their drivers. That's already true in the data center on the server. You would be taking a tremendous unnecessary risk if you launched a new server-oriented product that didn't work with Linux because there are more computers going into data centers running Linux than running Windows. What personal goals are you still looking to achieve? This project now has my full focus because I find it fascinating. And um, one of the things that I've learned to do, although it's kind of terrifying, is to let go of everything else. Uh, I mean, in theory, I should be managing a, a, a venture capital operation and an asset management operation and now um, a, a, another tech startup operation. But I've learned I, I just can't do that. So I, I put the, the, the other operations in good hands, the best hands I can find, and then launch myself wholeheartedly into this new tiny little startup. Um, and I expect that what will happen is, you know, over the next couple of years, we'll give a, the, the open source world a good run with Canonical and Ubuntu. And then I'll be looking for, for a new job. So, I, you know, we'll be standing next to the street saying, no job. <laughs> Any suggestions, gladly welcome. Um, there are lots of other, you know, things that I'd like to do. Um, I chose this one out of that list because it's the toughest one and it's the one that you know, is closest to me personally, and the one that I feel most passionate about. Um, but I'm under no illusions about the odds of success. I, you know, just, just because I've been lucky in the past doesn't mean I'll be lucky in the future. And once this one is, is settled, there'll be, um, there'll be other interesting projects and challenges.